it's another 1990s Radio Shack Gamma Ray to drown the competition. All right, time for another Gamma Ray. This one's gonna be even faster, more stable, and more turbocharged than the last one. Let's tear it apart and get building. First things first, shoot's completely stock, including the old antenna. Let's strip it down of all its guts, get it down to the bare hull, and then we can start rebuilding. We got all the radio equipment out, the old ESC that drove the brush motor up here. I actually found the uh, the gear here that came off the, the prop shaft had actually spun itself off and it was up in the front. So the prop shaft's actually already sliding free here, which saves me one step. That's great. We'll throw that out. Now I'm just gonna take out the motor and I save this motor mount. Hopefully we can reuse this whole motor mount with our brushless motor and uh, pull out a couple more pieces. I gotta undo the, the rudder here, take out the old servo here, and then we can put our new servo in. This is a bilge pump back here. I might try to save that, not sure yet, but let's get the rest of this out. This old analog servo with one, two, three, four, five, six wires coming out of it is gonna be replaced with a three wire modern servo. This is some old trash that came out of one of my RC airplanes, but it works good, never gave me any problems. So these actually fit right inside this case. It'll slide right in there. We'll put this horn on top of it. We'll have a modern servo um, and a not so modern old case that will work with our modern ESC. Okay, so a little bit of time with the Dremel and hot glue gun. I have the, the new modern servo in there and that combined with the horn that was originally on here, we can use the original rudder and it's gonna control it right there. So that was easy. One of the most important parts of the boat, really one of the easiest parts of the project. Now let's get our pile of new parts to go in here and start assembling. Okay, so I got a couple of parts in over the weekend and we're moving on to filling this emptied out boat back up with parts. One thing I got done was a new servo in there. That's just your standard 15 gram servo. This one even has plastic gears. For these little boats it'll work just fine it fits right in the original uh, servo box there i kept the bilge pump we'll see more on that later when i hook up the uh, just positive negative to a switch to the servo so i can use my dumbo rc4 channel and i'll use channel 3 to activate and deactivate the bilge pump speaking of dumbo rc this is like a 42 dollar uh, transmitter receiver combo that you get on Amazon. It's got all the bells and whistles of the big fancy ones for under 50 bucks. It's all you need. It's probably go uh, 1,500 feet. It's plenty. Um, four channels. You got channel four, three, uh, one, and two here. So it's plenty. So let's take a look at these parts. First of all, the big Leopard Hobby 3674. 3270 kV brushless motor. The thing's a monster. This is a 540 standard brush motor that came in the boat. This one's about twice as heavy and uh, about three times more powerful than, than this old guy. So really looking forward to how much power that thing's gonna put out. Now to connect the power to the prop, we've got a new flex shaft here and a Teflon tube. We've got our brass stuffing tube that's gonna go right from where the motor mounts down through and almost out the bottom. We've got the drive dog here. That's what will actually drive the propeller. The propeller will slip on here and then you nut. And I actually have an extra locking nut, which is always a good idea to keep the propeller from spinning off and, uh, and undoing itself. I also got some lead weights. I think this little tiny lightweight boat with this massive motor is gonna need a little extra help sticking to the water. So I got these lead weights and we'll find some place up in the front of the bow to and keep it down low. 
to help that out. Here's the original uh, motor mount. This here, this is for our water cooling for the ESC. It's a full kit from Offshore Electrics. You've got your water pickup tube here, the hose, and then you also get the outlet to let the water squirt out the back. Got some trim tabs here. These will help keep the boat stable at speed. These will mount right on the back here. And then a little Teflon washer here. That keeps the drive dog from wearing down this piece under here as the propeller spins at 25,000 RPM. So you just put that between, right in between there. So now we've got everything here, we can start assembling. First thing I'm gonna do is take out this, pull out this nasty uh, white lithium grease that's in there and um, see how we can fit this stuffing tube down in there as far as it'll go and we'll see where it comes up into where the motor's gonna mount. So. You can see this new motor fits perfectly in there, almost perfectly in line going down right out through the bottom where the propeller is going to come out. This is the coupler that's going to connect the motor to the flex shaft going down to the propeller. So we have a five millimeter shaft coming out of this leopard motor. This end is five millimeters here with two set screws. This end is the same diameter as our flex shaft and it's gonna connect into there and then crimp it when you tighten this down. So first, we're gonna mount this here temporarily, see where this comes out. And then we have our stuffing tube, this brass tube. It's gonna go right down into the bottom of the bilge there and we're gonna mate it up to the, the brass piece that's going out the bottom of the hull. So there might be a little bit of a gap there, might get it real tight, we'll see. But we're gonna have the drive shaft encased in this and this sleeve is going to go inside there it keeps all the water from coming up the tube and the tube will keep this super fast spinning drive shaft in a straight line let's get it all hooked up <laughs> Everything mocked up from the motor to the coupler to the shaft saver. This just keeps the shaft from slipping out of the boat if it ever comes disconnected from the coupler to the sleeve that's inside the brass tube, the brass stuffing tube, all the way right out through the bottom. You can see I have all this extra coming out the bottom. That's all going to slide up eventually. But for now, the next step is to glue all of this in place so that this stuffing tube is permanently mounted with the sleeve inside of it. And then we can just slide the drive shaft right up inside it when we're ready to actually connect it to the motor. So let's get that glued up. Okay, we got this little piece of plastic cut out. This is gonna be our drive shaft hoop. It'll drop right in there. And that's gonna get epoxied. First, I'm gonna scuff that up. I'm gonna scuff all the plastic around it. And I already have the drive shaft, or the stuffing tube here, um, scuffed up. And then I'm gonna just paste everything with epoxy. That's gonna solidify that. And I'm gonna drop epoxy right down into the bottom of the bilge and, uh, and hold the end, that end of the drive shaft there too, or the stuffing box down there too. Let's get it glued up. Okay, epoxy time. I just used the Gorilla Glue. Get this stuff on Amazon, five minutes set. So once you get squirting, get stirring, or else you're gonna be stiff. Does that make sense? And one of the best tips I can give, get these on Amazon too. These are just regular old popsicle sticks. I was so tired of using screwdrivers and everything else in the shop here, and getting everything covered in epoxy or pencils. And then you go and use a pencil and uh, and the whole pencil is covered in dried epoxy. So I'm just gonna load this thing up. I don't know how much I'm really gonna need, but I got plenty of this stuff. So let's get it stirred up. So we have the little piece of plastic here that's gonna 
hold the shaft in place. I'm just gonna fill the little hole that it's going into with epoxy first. And try not to get epoxy on everything else around it because I'm pretty good at doing that. Next, what we want to do is connect the drive shaft or the stuffing box down here to the hull. So what we have now is a stuffing tube in place going right down to the bottom of the bilge. That's epoxied into place. Front epoxy into place. We've got the sleeve in it that goes all the way down, right out to where there on these boats there's a brass piece that exits through the hull, and then that butts up to the plastic piece under here. So standard hobby grade stuff doesn't fit into this. So we're just going to use what they have there, and my stuffing tube will butt right up to that, and then this part of the drive shaft fills that plastic tube fairly well and with a little grease to seal it up. We don't have any water issues, especially when it's practically connected now that everything's epoxied together. So in a few minutes, this will be set up. And then we can actually mount the motor in place and I'll pull out the drive shaft and cut the drive shaft to length. So we have the final length. And then we're waiting on electronics. Once all the electronics are here, we'll be able to hook it all up. One kind of simple but annoying thing about this boat is that it's a stuffing tube that's built in here is a brittle plastic, especially because these boats are coming from the 1990s. That plastic really can't uh, stand up to any vibration, especially if your prop's not completely balanced. So the solution to that is just a small piece of plastic we cut that out to fit right up in here and then coat this whole thing in epoxy. That gap right there will fill in and what I'm going to do now, now is I have this sandpaper stapled to this board and I'm going to file down the edges of this until it's a nice point on the back of the fin. Now that I have a little bit of a knife edge on here, the water will flow nice and evenly over it. Next, with a little heat, we'll clean up any bird edges. So now the tube that the drive shaft goes through is all epoxied up. That brittle piece of plastic from the 90s has some real strength to it. A couple coats of epoxy and that brace underneath it, and we're all good for 25, 30,000 RPMs. Next on the to-do list, we're gonna connect the original bilge pump to this micro switch, and that's gonna connect to channel three that's right here on the transmitter. So whenever this button's pushed, it sends a servo signal, which is then translated into just an on-off switch right into this old rushed motor. So when you plugged in the battery in the original boat, this thing would start winding and it would just run the entire time that you were using the boat. Now with modern technology, we can use this little button here, switch it, and then your bilge pump turns on. Pretty sweet. So let's get this soldered up and everything connected. Now that all my connections are made, I have a 
temporary ESC hooked up to my receiver. So that's gonna be powering our on-off switch on the transmitter. When I hit channel three, the bilge pump will turn on and off. Next up, we're gonna be doing some soldering. We got our 120 amp ESC, it's liquid cooled. Gonna solder the ends on those. Our brushless inrunner motors in, 3270 kV Leopard Hobby motor. Of course, we got our programming card to program the ESC and a whole bunch of heat shrink, to keep all our connections nice and clean and tidy. Soldering iron, some alligator clips to hold it, some solder. Let's get this put together and then we can start getting the parts into the boat. So now that I have all my connections soldered up, I can kind of mock up where the ESC is gonna go. It looks like it'll fit nicely midship here. The problem is all this factory plastic in here. So I'm gonna take the Dremel, clean all this out, and then this will sit nicely right down on the side there. Okay, we got the motor temporarily mounted hooked up with all the soldered connections to the ESC that's mounted on this little piece of plastic bracket I made and connected by hook and loop fasteners so you can remove it. It's kind of unorthodox putting it sideways and forward like this. Maybe it would be back here normally or in the middle, but uh, with all the torque this boat's gonna produce for only being 19 inches long, I definitely want it on the left side to fight that torque. And I'm going to put a big honking battery further back so we can adjust with ballast or the battery as ballast to kind of level the boat out. So this is all hooked up right now, ready to go. I'm going to make a little platform for the receiver back here and I can connect all the connections back here from the ESC, the servo, and the bilge pump. And then we're pretty much ready to button it all up. Maybe a quick bracket for the battery here and a prop, but um, otherwise we're moving right along. So now that we have the receiver mounted up in its little box, the ESC mounted, the motor in its spot, all these connections made, it's time to put on some hardware. We have trim tabs here. They're gonna go right on the back here to help stabilize the boat at high speeds. And I'm also gonna mount this water pickup which will connect to the ESC to help cool the ESC and then I'll plumb it through the motor too for cooling that. So let's get these hooked up. Okay, so we have our trim tabs here. These are from Offshore Electrics. This transom has really limited space to mount stuff. So I've determined by looking on the inside, always really important to look inside the hull to see what you're gonna drill through to that putting it right in the middle, the outside edge of these, into the middle of these strakes or chines or whatever you call them, that that'll give me the best mounting option. I wish they could be a little further out, but I hit up here and on the inside here, there's plastic uh, mounting bolts that go through. So I'm kind of limited where I can put them. So first I'm just gonna hold this right in the middle nice and flush with the bottom of the hull and mark. Now I have my three dots on there. I know right where to drill. I'll do the same thing with this side, drill all my holes, then put some sealant on these and mount them up. Our trim tabs are all mounted up. Pretty excited to have the adjustability. So with the extra torque from this big old motor, we'll be able to compensate. Next up, we have the water pickup and the water line. We're gonna mount the pickup right back here on the transom. It'll stick down and scoop the water up as it goes by. 
and then we'll feed the line through the hull here and into the ESC. So the simple water pickup tube has been mounted. Now this hose is going to go on there and conveniently the Radio Shack hull has this water pickup tube size port right here that I just had to drill out. I'm not really sure what it was originally meant for. So we'll root the hose right in there, down on the inside of the gunnels here, right to the ESC. Now that I can see how far I need to go inside the hull, I can snip this tubing and slip it onto these connectors. Then from there, we'll come out the other side, loop it around and come out to the back. Over here, we have one last piece that I haven't shown you yet. This is the through hull fitting for the water to exit out of. So we'll put drill the hole in the hull and connect the hose onto that. I dropped the screw and this epoxy floor really isn't helping me find it. <sighs> all right, all the plumbing is done for our cooling system, including the outlet there where the water will spray out. Okay, so the motor is just set in place. The ESC is fully wired and plumbed to its cooling system. The receiver is in place. We're going to put a cover over that and the hardware in the back. And I uh, just cut out this piece of plastic. I'm going to drop this right in here. That'll hold an 11.1 .1 volt battery perfectly. And then we can expand. I'll cut out this later if I decide to get a giant battery to slip right in there. So we'll epoxy this in place. Now that we have the battery tray in place, we can start reassembly. And finally, we'll connect the motor through the coupler into the drive shaft out the back with the propeller. But now let's get the servo back in, the bilge pump back in and start hooking up all our connections. And then finally, we'll hook up that propeller. Everything's in and hooked up. Rudder. I'll actually connect that after we have the prop in. Bilge pump. Running on the third channel here. And the motor. No worries, reverse has been programmed. We're ready to go. So let's button this up. Connect the prop shaft and install the prop. And we're all set to go. Last step here. And a pretty important one is connecting this flex shaft, drive shaft with the prop to the motor. We're gonna use this coupler here. This has two set screws on it. That'll go onto the flat spot on this motor. And then this will crimp the flex shaft. This flex shaft comes, I think this one's 18 inches long, which is obviously too long for this little boat. So we're gonna to have to put it in and measure it. This drive dog here matches up with the propeller and that's what will actually connect, physically connect the propeller to the drive shaft. Right now it all spins freely. So once we figure out how long this will be, we'll set this in place, put a little flat spot on here for that, that set screw to grab onto and then we'll install the whole thing and crimp it down with this and that'll hold it right in. And most importantly of all, we're gonna fill that tube with a bunch of grease. So I figured out that I need eight inches from the drive dog there to where I'm gonna cut 
and that'll connect into the motor right there into the coupler. So we'll cut this, clean up the ends, slip it in and see how it fits. Okay, so eight inches was a rough estimate of what I should cut off the flex shaft. I can see now that I'm still 11.3 uh, millimeters away from having this flush against that. We wanna leave a little gap here. I'm gonna put a Teflon washer on there and a little bit of room for the drive shaft to tighten up under load so that it doesn't bind. So I'll cut another 11 millimeters off and this will come flush right up to the boat here. Now that the prop shaft length has been finally determined, I'm gonna actually mount the motor in, get that all locked down with the motor mount screws. I'm definitely gonna use some thread locker when I mount it right here to make sure that that's not gonna back off. Once that's in and complete, then I can really set up the prop shaft and know where it's gonna go. So you can see this 540 sized brushless motor fit right into the original Radio Shack 540 brushed motor mount. So by measuring with a caliper before I ordered this motor, I found that the body is the same diameter as the brush motor, which is a standard 540 size, and it fits right in the original mounting spot with the this bracket up here, which actually helps dissipate a little bit of heat. It's longer, but luckily it fits and the cover is actually gonna still fit right over the top. So now that that's solid in place, we can make the connection to our drive shaft. So I determined where my drive dog is gonna need a flat spot put in the drive shaft here for the set screw to set into. So I marked that with a marker and I take the prop off and use my Dremel to just put a little flat spot on there and then the set screw will set right into that flat spot. Now you can see that the drive shaft has a little flat spot in it. The prop will set onto the nut and then that set screw will set right into that. Now that I have the drive shaft in place, and all measured up, it's not connected to the coupler. I have this old plastic uh, syringe, dental syringe, that I'm gonna fill with grease and I'm gonna inject the grease up the, the stuffing box or shaft here. And that's gonna help keep the water out and lubricate the drive shaft. I'm gonna stick it right up in here and I'm gonna squirt a whole bunch of it right up the drive shaft. Put the extra on here. Okay, here comes the drive shaft. And it's through, completely lubricated. Now we'll push it into the coupler. I'm gonna clean off a little bit of that grease first, and then we'll tighten the coupler down, make sure we have a good connection. Drive shaft's in, the coupler's connected, everything's torqued down. The very last step is to put the original Radio Shack rudder back in and connect it up to the servo. So this is a new servo in the original Radio Shack holder for the servo, and it's gonna drive the actual original Radio Shack rudder. So it's kind of cool we got to use some original stuff, including the original bilge pump and the original motor mount. Um, otherwise, all the electronics are new and we have a giant battery in here. So let's get that hooked up and then we're gonna tidy up some wires and we should be ready to hit the water. Okay, everything's buttoned up. 2200 milliamp hour, 75C, 11.1 .1 volt battery. Ready to hit the water.
Whoa. Ho, ho, ho. No. You flip it? Yep. It's upside oh, down. Yeah. <laughs> well, boat flipped over a little too much power. There it is. I just paddled about a quarter mile downstream, but I got it. We'll boat again. She's fast though. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And I'll try to tag every part I used in this build. Have fun. She's dried out and back in action. No problem.